Okay, today I'm going to be showing you that your whole life is a lie. Salt does not melt ice. So to be clear what we probably already know, let's see what salt does when you put it on ice. So I'll leave this one as my control and this one is the one that has salt on it. So while we're waiting, you can see on this piece of ice here, you can see that the salt has seemingly eaten little chunks into it. See how it's all jagged and there's holes in it? Okay, so after about five minutes, you can see the water level on the one with salt, and there's not really a water level on the one without salt. And one other difference I want you to notice is look at the cup with salt. This one has condensation all over it, but this one doesn't. It's almost as if this cup is colder than this one. So what is going on here? If salt melts ice, why is this colder? Instead of just relying on the visible condensation on the side, there's actually even frost. But let's not just rely on the fact that there's frost on the cup, let's measure the temperature. So this water in the non-salt cup is showing around 35 degrees Fahrenheit. It should be about 32 degrees Fahrenheit, but because it's on the bottom of the cup, the cup is a little bit warmer, so it's heating it up a little more. Now let's see what the salt water cup is. Whoa, it went below freezing. Get a different temperature probe. 15.2 degrees Fahrenheit, let's do Celsius for everyone. Negative 10 degrees Celsius. Way colder than freezing and still dropping. But this is liquid water in there. You see, that's a liquid. And this is solid ice on the outside. So after about 10 minutes, let's see how much water we get out of the non-salt cup. That's around 10 milliliters. Now let's see how much water we get out of the salted cup. So that's around 60 milliliters. So you may be thoroughly confused by now. You've always been told that salt melts ice, and right now I'm telling you that salt doesn't melt ice, but we've got six times the amount of liquid in the one we put salt in, and it's colder than freezing, but there's solid ice on the side of the cup. So let's explain what's going on here. Okay, here's proof number one that salt does not melt ice. In order to melt ice, you need to add heat to it. But let's see what happens when we add salt to water. So the water just got colder. So I have room temperature salt and room temperature water, and when I put the salt in the water, it just got colder by two to three degrees. And the reason that happens is because when salt dissolves in water, it's endothermic, meaning it absorbs energy. And so just the act of salt dissolving on water takes away energy from the water and makes it colder. So not only does salt not melt ice, but it actually makes it even colder. So what is happening when you put salt on ice? So on the surface of every piece of solid ice is a very thin layer of liquid water. And they're in equilibrium with each other, meaning that there's always some liquid turning back into a solid and some solid turning back into a liquid. And when the ice isn't melting or freezing, they're always exchanging at a constant rate so it looks like nothing's happening. But when you put salt on the ice, it actually interferes with the liquid's ability to turn back into a solid. 
And so suddenly you start getting this buildup of liquid around the solid. And so a lot of people naively say that the ice is melting, when in reality it's actually getting colder. It's not melting at all. So I have to mention that a lot of people use calcium chloride to melt ice. And in the case of calcium chloride, it actually does produce heat when it dissolves in water. And so calcium chloride actually does melt the ice. It also has the same equilibrium effect that sodium chloride has. So that's why it's such a better ice melter than just sodium chloride. So if someone ever urges you to try to melt some ice with some sodium chloride, tell them no, you cannot do that. And then give them a half hour to 45 minute discussion on the laws of thermodynamics and equilibrium. And if you've ever made homemade ice cream before, this is why you put salt on the ice on the outside of the turning bucket. Because when it dissolves in the ice, it makes it colder. And another reason you do that is because it makes more liquid water, and so you can transfer the heat out of the ice cream quicker. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. If you have any questions about what I talked about today, let me know in the comments section and I'll try to get to them. And if you're not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video comes out. And if you have any suggestions you wanna see me do, also let me know that in the comments section and I'll see you next time.